Well, good evening, everybody. We are so excited for you to be here with us this evening. And we are praying for you. We are praying blessings over you and your family's life through this time. And before we jump into today's devotional and look in the Bible, I want to let make known a few things that are that is happening. So this Sunday, we will be still having a Facebook and YouTube live okay this Sunday we're gonna have Facebook and YouTube online and then on Monday I have a something special that we're gonna do on Monday we are gonna do an additional devotion now this devotion isn't just any devotion this devotion is going to be based off of people that have anxiety that have worry and that have fear okay so if you know somebody that is struggling with anxiety anxiety, worry, or fear, or if you are struggling with it, then I want to invite you on Mondays at 7 p.m. as we um, just dive into the Word and look into the Word and how to overcome fear, how to overcome anxiety, how to overcome the worry of this world and even where we are today. So that is what we are going to be looking at on Mondays. And then we have something very special planned for Mother's Day, which is like coming very quickly in a week and a half now. It's almost here. Mother's Day is coming and we have something planned and we have something exciting to tell you, but you will have to check on with us at 1045 on Sunday to find out what it is. What are we going to be doing? So make sure you get on at 1045 with us on service, with service online and hear what we are going to do. But before we jump into today's word, would we be able just to go to the Lord in prayer and just pray real fast. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you will help us to re turn our eyes, our heart, our minds to you, Lord God. Let us see the word in your eyes, Lord Jesus. Let us be able to see you in a new light today, Lord God. Let us be like sponges soaking up everything that you have planned for us, everything you want to speak to us, Lord God. Let us hear the words, Lord God. Let us hear the words of what you are wanting to speak to us, Lord Jesus. And we ask this in your name, in your mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. So today we are going, for the next few Wednesdays, we're going to go over a study that's entitled Love. Love, love, love. We know what love is. You know what love is. We've heard this word love before. We've seen it displayed in our families, um, whether it was our parents or grandparents or aunt and uncle. We've seen what love is. And so we are going to look to the Bible and also see what is love. What is love? And because we need to know what love is because God loves us. And so we must know how to love as well because we we want to resemble what God has showed us. Now, if you have your Bible, I don't want you just to read it down below. I don't, I want you to grab your Bible, whether it's on your phone or the actual Bible. Okay. And I want you to read with me as I read it. I want you to read with me the word of God. This first verse is found in Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, and it's going to be verse 29 through 30 verse 29 through 30. Now this message as you're turning there, this message is entitled love God, love God, because everything we do, we must love God and we must know God in order to love God. Okay. So let us look to what the scripture says in Mark chapter 12, verse 29 through 30. It says, the most important one answered Jesus, is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength, with all your strength. It is so good. That is so good. So we've heard this verse. Some of us have heard this verse 
through years of growing up and just learning who God is and, you know, love God. You know, when I think of love, you, you don't just love, love people right away. You don't just love your spouse right away when you first met them. You get to know them. But the more you get to know them, the closer you begin to draw close to them and, and, and take time with them and, and be with them, you start to fall in love with them. And so when you fall in love with them, it's the exact same thing. We have to take time and read the Word of God. We have to take time and, and to search the heart of God and to seek His face. And, and when we do that, we start to begin to find the love and fall in love with God. And as Christians, we are called to love God with every part of who we are. And this is truly where the where our Christian walk begins. It begins by loving God. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 19 it says, "We love because he loved us." We love because he first loved us. Now, you can be the most obedient person in the world. You can be extremely obedient. But if you do not love God, all that obedience means nothing. Our life should revolve around who God is. Now, this doesn't mean we, we can't love other things and we can't like other things or do anything else. What it's meaning is that God should be in the forefront of our minds at all times. God should be at the forefront of everything we do, every single activity we do, every single song, every single word that comes out of our mouth should resemble who God is. But I want to tonight to look at this verse in, in Mark, and I want to look at the four things that it says love is. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's the first one. Love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So I want to look at those four things tonight. And so the first one is love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your heart. Now, if you still have your Bible open, you're going to want to go ahead and turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And while you're doing that, I'm going to keep talking. Now, we must love God with all of our heart. And love, loving God with all of our heart should trickle down to all the other areas in our life. It doesn't matter how physically fit we are. Or even if we have a heart problem. When your heart is turned away from God, when your heart is turned away from the Lord, your heart is covered by a veil. We can't see nor reflect Him, the Lord, Jesus Christ, God. We can't reflect Him. So if you have your Bible, I wanted you to turn to... 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 16 through 18. And it says this in verse 16. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, did you catch that? But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. How many of us need freedom tonight? Amen. Then verse 18 says, and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with every increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Wow, that's so good. That's so good. But we can't just love the Lord your God with all your heart. We have to love the Lord our God with all of our soul as well. And that's, that's the second one in there is soul. His thoughts should be our thoughts. His feelings should be my feelings. His decisions should be my decisions. Our entire being 
should display the love of God. We are so connected to him that we begin to look more and more like him every single day. I saw a post this past week that said, if someone said your name, what would they think? And it's, and that's, and you know, it, it kind of brings a realization. If, if someone says your name, what are they going to think of you? Are they going to think of you as somebody that devoted their life to Christ, that gave everything they had, that loved God with all of their heart? Or are they going to say, oh, they're the ones that cuss all the time or oh they're the ones that party all the time or, or oh, they're the ones that what is going to come out of their mouth if your name was brought up but I want to encourage us to live like Christ every single day that we become so connected to him that we begin to look more and more like him every single day but the verse said love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and that third one was and with all your mind you see in christ we have a new mind in christ we have a new mind in christ we should be continuing to transform our mind which brings me to our next verse which is going to be in romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 so many of us know this scripture and it's so profound and in romans chapter 12 verse 1 through 2 says this therefore i urge you brothers in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will so we should first go to god we should first love god and when we love god when we start looking into the word of god when we start dissecting and and looking at what his commandments are and when we start seeing who he is we get to experience him in a supernatural way to where we see god christ's heart we get to see god's heart and jesus christ and and why they do what they do and and why they're doing it because they're doing it in love because they loved us first just like john said and so we have to instead of having the perspective of looking at the bible just reading it that's good but what's better is knowing the love of god and when we experience God and we, and we love God and, and then when we read the word, we get to experience him in a deeper way that strengthens our relationship with him. In that verse, it said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. And then that last one was, and with all of what? Your strength. Your strength. You see, our outward action will then begin to change. When we experience God and we love God and we start turning to his word and we then we start reading his word, you know, what starts to happen is our heart begins to transform. Our heart begins to change. Our mind begins to change. You know, this isn't just, and I'm not just talking about the physical strength, but what I'm talking about is everything that we have. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, and it says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. And not to men. 
And you know, I, I'm reminded that, I'm reminded what Ravi Zacharias once said. He said, what I believe in my heart must make sense in my mind. You know, oftentimes when we work out, if, if you're a workout buff or if you like to work out, then you know that when you're in the gym and, and you want to get that one rep, you, you just want to get one more in. You want to leave it all in the gym. You want to leave it all on the floor. Or what my coach used to say when I used to play football is leave it all on the field. Leave it all on the field. Give it everything you have. Don't wish tomorrow that you could have given more yesterday. Leave it all on the field. Give everything you have on the field. Leave it all out there. So my question to you is, do you do that one more rep when it comes to knowing Jesus and living for him and with him? Do you leave it on the field or are you saying, man, I should have done that yesterday or, oh man, I shouldn't, I should have, I should have, I should have. Because when it comes time for God to take me home, I want to be able to say, I gave it my all. I left it all out. I gave it all out on the field. Are you giving it all out to God? Are you giving your full self? Are you, are you struggling with something? Are you trying to overcome something and you just seem like you can't get rid of it? Do you need freedom? Because let me tell you, if you have that sin in your life, what it does is it becomes a blockage. It, it, it blinds you from what God is trying to speak to you. And we can't, buy, we can't be blinded from things of this world. And so is there something you need to give your life over to? Is there something that you should, you need to walk by faith and not by sight? Do you need to look for healing? Do you need to find that healing in God? Let me tell you, we go to God for forgiveness, but we go to God's people for healing. You, you've heard me say that many times in my sermons, but it's true because when we are dealing with something and we need to get it out and when we need to really just find freedom from it, we need to go to God's people. We need to go to our brothers and sisters in Christ and ask for prayer. So whatever that is that's in your life that you are needing to get rid of, that's holding you back to giving God your all. As I begin to pray, would you just start asking God for forgiveness? But then don't stop there. Ask God for forgiveness. But start looking to God for healing and that recovery. Because God has so much more for your life. God has so much more planned for you. If we just get rid of this blockage that's in front of us, if we just get rid of what is hindering us, we can see his will. And we'll see where he is taking us and what he wants for us. But we have to take those steps. And after I pray, I'm going to challenge you for the next five to ten minutes after after. Uh, just to turn on worship music, whether it's on your phone, your computer, your laptop, your, your TV, wherever it is, just turn on worship music for the next five to 10 minutes. Because I think in today's time, it's so easy for us to reflect on the negative. It's easy to reflect on the, on, on what I did wrong, all the bad things that's going on in this world. And so what I want you to do in that five to 10 minutes of worship playing is Write down all the stuff that God has begun to do in your life, even while this pandemic has been going through. Start writing down. See what God is doing in your life. Focus on what God is doing. There's no reason to focus on the wrong. Let's focus on the right. And when we focus on the right, it'll strengthen our walk in him, knowing that he has the best in mind for us, that he loves us and he cares for us. And because of that, we can love and we can go out and love others.
So can we all just close our eyes and bow our head and pray? Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. And, and Lord God, we just open our hearts up to you, Lord God. And we just want to say thank you for giving us another breath to breathe, for placing us another day on earth to live. Lord God, we thank you for what you have planned in our lives, Lord God, even if we don't see the bigger picture. We thank you because we know that your will will be done and it is the best thing for us. Lord God, we thank you in that. And Lord God, I just pray for the ones that are watching watching and listening tonight, Lord God. I pray for the ones that are dealing with some struggles. I pray for the ones that are needing to find healing, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, right now that they will just turn from their ways and look to you, that they will turn from the wickedness of this world, that they will drop the wall that is blocking their view for you, Lord God, that they will repent of their ways and that they will search out, that they will seek out your people to, to find that healing, to start having that process of freedom in their life, Lord God. I pray over them right now, Lord Jesus, wherever they are, whatever it is, Lord God, I pray over them that their hearts will turn to you, that they will start experiencing you, experiencing you in a supernatural way. And Lord God, that we, our hearts will focus on the love that you have given us so that we may love others as well, Lord God. That we may love our neighbors and, and have divine appointments in Walmart and H-E-B and, and, and at our co-workers, Lord God. And, and just be able to have those moments that you can speak through us, through love for you, Lord God. We ask this in your mighty name, we pray. Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. So right now, will you just turn on some worship music and begin to worship his name right now. God bless. <laughs> 